Maybe you've heard some people talking about this thing called mTOR and how it's gonna give you cancer or accelerate aging. <coughs> is it true or is it just taken out of context? This video is about mammalian target of rapamycin or mTOR. It's an important concept for health and longevity. Mechanistic or mammalian target of rapamycin, mTOR, is a protein kinase fuel sensor that monitors the energy stats of your cells. There are two mTOR complexes, mTORC1 and mTORC2. They stimulate cell growth, proliferation, DNA repair, protein synthesis, angiogenesis, muscle building, the immune system, and everything related to anabolism. mTORC1 functions as a nutrient sensor that controls protein synthesis. mTORC1 is regulated by insulin, growth factors, amino acids, mechanical stimuli, oxidative stress, oxygen levels, presence of energy molecules like ATP, phosphatidic acid, and glucose. It's a key factor in skeletal muscle protein synthesis. mTORC2 functions regulate the actin cytoskeleton, which is a network of long chains of proteins in the cytoplasm of eukaryotic cells. Oh. Basically, mTOR functions like an anabolic switch that turns on cellular growth throughout the entire body. Whenever your body detects excess energy in the system, it'll try to direct it into the right places. AMPK, mTORC1 and YULK1 form the kinase triad, which maintains energy and nutrient homeostasis. These protein kinases and fuel sensors are in constant correlation with each other, and they're balancing each other out based on the energetic conditions of the body. mTOR regulation is mostly mediated through AMP-activated protein kinase, or AMPK. A reduction in energy activates AMPK, which promotes catabolic pathways for maintaining energy homeostasis. AMPK inhibits muscle growth by suppressing mTORC1. Here are the things that activate mTOR. Amino acids promote mTORC1 activity. Leucine specifically activates mTORC1 the most, and it also promotes muscle protein synthesis. Mechanical stimuli from resistance exercise increase the levels of mTORC1. Phosphatidic acid gets regulated by exercise, which activates mTORC1. Creatine may potentially promote mTORC1 by increasing IGF-1 activity after exercise, but doesn't further potentiate mTORC1 several hours after exercise. Overexpression of mTOR or its dysfunction is often related to various cancers and genetic disorders. Suppressing mTOR with diets or certain supplements like metformin or rapamycin are common ways of treating cancer and tumor growth. Increased glycolysis, which is the metabolism of glucose into lactate, is often found to be higher in cancer cells, also known as the Warburg effect. In 1924, Otto Warburg discovered that cancerous tumor cells primarily meet their energy demands from glycolysis. mTOR promotes the activation of insulin receptors and insulin-like growth factor 1 receptors, which is in most cases accompanied by glucose and glycolysis. Inhibiting mTOR also promotes autophagy, which is the catabolic pathway of cellular recycling and renewal. High mTOR activity may promote tumor growth because of stopping autophagy from removing cancerous cells. Because of its anabolic effects, mTOR is really beneficial when you're young and you're growing, but it may not be ideal when you get older. But at the same time, mTOR is still essential for maintaining muscle and actually building lean tissue. One of the critical factors of longevity is also having enough muscle mass because you experience more muscle loss as you get older through sarcopenia. The problem is also that as you get older, you reduce the testosterone, you reduce growth hormone, and you become more resistant to anabolic ingestions of protein. So it gets harder for you to build muscle, and it's harder for you to maintain it. So in that case, mTOR activation in adequate amounts is actually pro-longevity as you get older. But too much mTOR is definitely not good, so you always have to find this Goldilocks zone where you stimulate mTOR enough with adequate protein, enough resistance exercise, and avoiding all these other catabolic stresses. Here are the things that inhibit mTOR. Dietary protein restriction lowers mTOR, especially amino acid deficiencies. Calorie restriction lowers mTOR and promotes autophagy. Fasting lowers glucose, insulin and suppresses mTOR while raising AMPK. This is the most effective method of inhibiting mTOR. Ketogenic diets that are moderate in protein and low in glucose lower mTOR activity. Exercise inhibits mTOR C1 in liver and fat cells. This is great because you'll be preventing fat gain while promoting longevity and muscle growth. Metformin is a potent anti-diabetic drug that lowers blood sugar and insulin, thus lowering mTOR. Rapamycin is an immunosuppressing drug that lowers mTOR. Curcumin inhibits mTOR signaling in cancer cells. Anthocyanins found in blueberries and grapeseed extract promote AMPK and block mTOR. Carnosine inhibits the proliferation of human gastric carcinoma cancer cells by retarding mTOR signaling. 
Carnosine is an amino acid and with anti-aging and antioxidant benefits. Although there has been a lot of fear-mongering about mTOR and protein, they're still quite essential for maintaining lean muscle mass and promoting longevity. The problem with diets that restrict protein for too much is that they predispose you to anabolic resistance and they also may predispose you to muscle loss. And the problem is even that even if you go on a low-protein diet, you may still not end up inhibiting mTOR because you're going to activate it by consuming carbohydrates or you may activate it by simply consuming even just a bit of too much protein. So it's not that sustainable to go on a low protein diet for the long term. A much more easier and much more effective way of going about it is to cycle through periods of low mTOR and adequate mTOR by practicing intermittent fasting. It's a much more effective way of maintaining muscle and actually being able to build it because during the fasted state you tap into deeper ketosis which enables you to get away with caloric restriction and not lose your muscle mass. While at the same time, after you break the fast, you consume adequate amounts of protein and you're still able to build muscle with it. Whereas on the other hand, if you go on a really restrictive diet that keeps your protein very low, you're not going to be able to build muscle with it. And you're actually going to predispose it to gradually losing your insulin sensitivity and gradually losing your muscle mass. Not enough mTOR can actually predispose you to some insulin problems and you won't be able to shuttle glucose into the right places. If you have too low mTOR, then you won't be able to build muscle muscle, thus having poorer metabolic flexibility and thus actually predisposing yourself to disease. mTOR also contributes to neural plasticity and learning memory development. mTOR and IGF-1 can actually inhibit age-related cognitive decline and mTOR also helps to grow synaptic connections. All in all, mTOR signaling seems to be problematic in people who already have some sort of a disease like cancers or tumors. The problem is that mTOR would inhibit autophagy that would recycle those cancer cells and keep them away. If you are already sick, then it is indeed a good idea to go on a semi-low protein diet and practice some longer fasts. But if you're already healthy, then you don't really have to worry about restricting your protein that much in fear of activating mTOR and speeding up the aging. The caveat to this is that I would still recommend you to do some intermittent fasting to enable your body to go into deeper autophagy and deeper ketosis whenever you're not eating because three square meals a day of high protein and stimulating mTOR all the time is indeed maybe like a recipe for disaster because you're not going to get into autophagy. But if you're practicing some form of intermittent fasting, even just eating once a day or even two times a day, then you don't really have to worry about mTOR because you're already fasting and fasting is the opposite of mTOR. You're already suppressing mTOR quite a lot. The second thing that makes mTOR work for you, not against you, is resistance training because you'll be using that mTOR mTOR to build lean muscle, which in turn makes you more insulin sensitive, increases your glycogen storage, and generally promotes longevity. So, doing resistance training with intermittent fasting is the perfect combination for achieving the balance between autophagy and getting enough mTOR. If you want to know how to follow an autophagic lifestyle that incorporates diet, exercise, and other biohacks for increased longevity and performance, then check out my new book, Metabolic Autophagy. But other than that, thanks for watching this video. Make sure you click the like, subscribe, notification bell as well. My name is Seem. Stay balanced, stay empowered. God of Thunder.